All right, this is, uh, this is AP Lit, and we're going to start the day, we're going to start the day um, with an exercise about diction. I wanted to show you, um, the assignment is real simple, we did it the other day in the packet, and uh, essentially we're going to be doing this at least once a week for the rest of the year. Uh, it's, it's really the the possibilities are endless. You could take any passage from any book and do what we're going to do. What you have in front of you, or will have in front of you, did I give it to you yet? Um, what you're going to have is a sheet, I'll show it to you, from the first page of the Scarlet Letter. I'm sorry, Red Badge of Curse, not the Scarlet Letter. I think I'm giving you too many. How do you start? Too proud of you. All right, so um, what we'll do here is uh, exercise that. We'll all I'm asking you, God, all I'm asking you to do is to practice reading closely. And this is what you you have to do. So we're, this is the first page of the Red Badge of Courage. It doesn't even have a complete sentence at the end. At least the end of mine, I think it goes on to something. It doesn't matter. Um, it's kind of arbitrary where you start it or stop it. What I want you to do, and I've had years to do this, but uh, what I want you to do is is go through and label the L, the E, the A, uh, the C, the D, and the C. In other words, abstract, concrete, denotation, connotation. Go through the passage. I use different colors because I have to teach it, so I have to look at it. And uh, underline examples of each of those, the low, the elevated, the abstract. Uh, there won't be as much of this. There'll be plenty of the C, the concrete. Denotation and connotation, I think you'll find. Uh, it's amazing as you, as you look at it carefully what you'll find. And so I'm going to give you five or ten minutes to go through here. If you have colored pencils, somehow that, but you know, you're labeling different things. So it all looks the same if you use a pencil, but you can use colored pencils. Um, and then what we're going to do is draw some conclusions based on the kind of diction that we find. That's the whole point, is to come up with some conclusions uh, for the meaning. Like, what was the purpose of these, uh, these particular words? What, what did they accomplish? So see what you can do over the next few minutes.
again, the goal would be not to find as few things as you can do, just to have done it, but find as many as you can. I mean, it should be, hopefully, you kind of take ownership of it and uh, see how many things I can find, because you're going to have to, this is what you're going to be doing all year. It's going to be what you're going to be doing on the exam, uh, reading the passage and finding things to say about it. And we're, we're looking at fiction right now is one of those things. Take a couple more minutes. Let's get us started. What are some of the notable things that you noticed? Uh, and tell me what you know what they are and any conclusions you can draw. Um, a lot of his word choice uh, is like elevated, but like whenever the people speak, it's kind of like low diction. So it's like um, he's writing. And how about educated? Yeah. They might be very intelligent. There is, you know, there's a difference, but very good observation. Uh, the, the soldiers are uneducated, the way they speak, slang, low diction. The narrator is high diction. Now, what difference does that mean? What, what implications do both of those observations uh, have? What does it say about anything that the soldiers are not well educated? Um, yeah. Yeah. Does it have to be about like education or could it necessarily be like where they're from? It's both. Very good. So where are they from? I mean, not, not a place, but what does that say about them? That's a really good point. It, th these are examples of uh, slang. Um, so can you, what, what, can you tell where they're from or their education or anything else about them? What about their age? Do they have in mind what age these people are? Yeah. Uh, why do you say that? I mean, th there's a couple reasons I think that's absolutely true. Why they do seem to speak in a way of uh, not only uneducated, but like lack of experience. In Good. So what does that tell you, just to make a broad leap from there, what does it tell you about war? Oh, war. There's no time for anything else except for like preparing and training. Yes, and what kind, what age people fight wars? Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're the, uh, the higher ranking officers, you know, you could be in your 20s and maybe even being a major. You know, uh, 20s is really, really young still in our culture, but not in the military. You could be a captain or a major in your 20s, and particularly in war, when they get, you know, they get, um, 
what do you call it, um, when you move up in the ranks. Promotion. Yeah, promotion, right. Um, on the battlefield. You know, I mean, you're, your guy just got killed, so now we're, we're making you somebody else. Field promotions. Right. And then, uh, but anyway, that tells you about this one passage and the way they speak tells you about that they're uneducated. I picture a lot of them, and, and actually these people are, probably, are from New York, given the author. Uh, not New York City necessarily, but the state of New York. Um, and they're young. War is, war is um, fought by young people. Um, what does it tell you, Davis pointed out, what does it tell you about the high diction of the, um, of the uh, narrator? Why, why is that significant? Is that, why do we want him to be smart? It gives him credibility. So the narrator has a great deal of credibility um, because he's an, um, more of an omniscient narrator and it's not like Huck Finn. Huck Finn only knows what he sees right in front of him and he speaks, he doesn't have elevated diction, but this guy does have elevated diction and it gives him credibility. You can trust more what he says because he seems to be educated and he uses that language. Great start. In some cases, but that's not enough to write a whole paper on it. And and you, you would be given something. Prop. This is probably not something a little longer. But what else can we say, um, Ethan? What else can you? Say? What did you notice? We've looked at the low diction and the high diction, but there are other things here. Um, uh, the diction is the same. Did you see any concrete or abstract? Yeah, I wasn't really sure what concrete was. Concrete is things you can see, smell, taste, okay. and touch. If we were doing poetry, what would we call that? Sensory. What? Imagery. Okay. Then, All right. Um, what, did, what about the imagery? Uh, let's see. I underlined when they said, as the landscape changed from brown to green. Why is it changing from grant bound to green right in front of them? Like literally in that sentence, the landscape changed from brown to green. How's that possible? Changing the sun. The sun's coming up. It was early morning. I mean, and now it's later in the morning. So and as the narrator is watching, the uh, landscape is changed. So, you know, did you notice that? Um, that's another thing about soldiers. They do their best work in the dark. I mean, they start out in the dark. If, if you ever go join the military, not gonna be sleeping to seven to eight, uh, go to military school, you're up at four or five. I mean, you're up anytime they tell you to get up. You sleep anytime that you can. That's the life of a soldier. I admire that. Um, but that's, that's when they do their best work. They're not sleeping in today. Hey, let's get this war started about noon I, I get a good breakfast you know you're up early and you know you're you're literally maybe even shooting early um what else john did you notice about the diction i just felt like there was a lot of like elevated we, uh, we said that what what, what, what about it especially in like even like the fourth word like reluctantly i felt like that was more elevated say that again like the fourth word like reluctantly like that's more elevated and i noticed that like all right, let's, let's take a look at that first sentence and the word reluctantly. What's reluctant? The cold. Yes, and what is the cold reluctantly doing? So what, what, what do we call that? An abstract idea. Yes, and what, do we call, what else do we call it in poetic terms? Thank you, personification. Look at that first sentence. Cold can't be reluctant. Right, that's right. There are three other words in that first sentence that are Persona, that personify something. What are they? Um, Madison, find some others. Um, the fog. Is the fog. What is the fog doing? Um, it's like stretching out the hills. Um, we'll back up a little bit. What, what's the word that came before fog? So when it, the fog is retiring, what is it doing? It's going away. Going away. Uh, but, but again, that's something we do. People retire. What other, uh, Todd, what other, in that same sentence, do you notice? 
Same first sentence. We've got reluctant, we've got retiring, and I see two more. Um, um, revealed, possibly, possibly. What else? First sentence. Personification. I think once you see it, your eyes will be open. Like, oh yeah, now I see it. You know, it's hard to see. Uh, you, you, you want me to hand it to somebody else? Huh? Yeah. Say that again. What's resting? What's what's resting? The army. The army. What else does the army do? Stretched out. It's stretched out on the hills, resting. So why do you think? And look at the next sentence. As the landscape changed, the army awakened, began to tremble with eagerness. So what is the author doing with those?